Y'all, I'm sorry. Lastly, let's talk about Mama Knowles, y'all. Let's talk about Miss Tina Lawson. So there's a documentary, right? Documentary called Profiled. And it's about black men being profiled. Black men exclusively being profiled in the system of racism, of being aggressive and scary, you know, all of these stereotypes of black men that cause harm. All because some white woman asked her why she let her daughter marry a drug dealer. He's a businessman. He says he's that. Yeah, but he, he was also a drug dealer. The answer to this is not black men don't do these things. The answer to that is white men do these things too. So why do y'all only clutch your purses for black men? That's what it really is. What it really is is that white men abuse, beat, assault, great juice, their women, just like black men do to black women and so forth and so on. It's the same thing as crime in any community. You affect who is closest to you. If you think white men aren't going home and beating the shit out of their wives, check out the police department. That's the answer. The answer is we aren't the only ones that have fucked up individuals amongst us. So stop assuming that that's who we are because of the shade of our skin tone. You sound fucking stupid. That's what it is. But here's the thing. Is it tone deaf? That's the question. Is it tone deaf for Tina to decide to put out such a documentary at a time like this. It's 2022. It's not 1995. If we were in the 90s, we're having a conversation about stereotypes. That's a different time period. We should be having conversations about stereotypical behavior and how that is not always indicative of the realistic lives that black people lead. Sure. Absolutely. But based off of social media, Based off of conversations that I have with men around me, they may not always be of harm, but they reiterate some of the same ignorant, dangerous mindsets that I see online. So, when women are going missing and you have two successful daughters and you have a black husband, a black ex husband that dogged you out and cheated on you. Had a baby on you. Then you get with Mr. Lawson over here, pot belly, who got mad because she said he wasn't perfect. Nigga, you not perfect. The fuck wrong with you? Nobody's perfect. What are you on drugs? How do y'all? I was watching Tonya TKO. She posted, you know, a video of this interview for Black Love that I think they did. And she said, he's not perfect, but I love him, whatever. And he was like, no. And she was like, no. And he sat there and was seemingly upset that she said he wasn't perfect. And y'all, that was the biggest teller of his mindset and how they probably curse each other out when nobody's around. They love each other, but they curse each other the fuck out because Tina is not dealing with that bullshit from another man like that. So I feel like when they got in the back and they had a conversation, she was like, boy, if you don't get the fuck out of my face with this foolishness. <laughs> but he was actively upset that she said he wasn't perfect, which makes me feel like something is wrong with Mr. Lawson over there. So when you have problematic men in your life, like you're saying, like Miss Tina, here's the thing. Jay-Z may not be a drug dealer anymore, but he was one. So it's weird as fuck for you to act like it's all lies and all stereotypes when he literally did used to do that shit. That's what he used to do. 
Yeah, she keep it cute because she don't give a fuck. But why put out a documentary in this time period about protecting black men and not also protecting black women? I'm going to tell y'all the truth of the matter is we are more harmed in society than they are. They may have more conflict with white men than we do, but I don't even really believe that. Y'all may have more issues because they see you as a bigger threat because you're a man. But they kill black women, assault black women, throw us away, don't give a fuck when stuff happens to us, don't listen to us when we telling people they done stuff to us. Like, what are you talking about? Like, women are going missing. Women are being trafficked. Like, Tisha Campbell was just on the internet saying somebody tried to fucking kidnap her. Women are going missing all over the place. But the conversation that we're having is about black men not always living up to stereotypes. As you tell us about your, your, your son-in-law that absolutely lived up to the stereotype until he became a, ra a, a rapist, Lord, Lord, a rapper. <laughs> a rapper, sorry, y'all. Until he became a rapper. And then he was still rapping about the shit that he lived, perpetuating it even more. And he did change. I feel like Jay-Z changed. I feel like Jay-Z had an escalation of mindset and decided to stop rapping the way he used to. So he did change the way he was. And he deserves to be treated as the person that he is now, not the person that he was then. So that racist white lady should have been cursed out first to fuck off. Man, why are you even fucking talking to me? Do, does it look like you should be talking to me? Do you think it's okay for you to ask me a question like that? And another thing, I would have looked at that white lady and been like, so is my daughter not supposed to be able to choose her own spouse? My daughter was an adult when she married Jay-Z. What do you mean allow? She was an adult. She can marry whoever the fuck she wants to, to marry, especially when she's the millionaire. She can marry whoever the fuck she wants to marry. Beyonce wasn't pigeonholed into being with Jay-Z. So she should have checked that fucking lady for assuming that somebody was going to tell Beyonce who to marry. First of all, bitch, my daughter ain't no, ain't, ain't nobody you gonna tell who to marry. The fuck is you talking about? Y'all may tell y'all little daughters who to, who to marry, but I wasn't about to tell Beyonce who to marry. Nobody was gonna tell Beyonce who to marry. Let's start there. Okay? But the truth of the matter is, the white lady wasn't wrong because, you, still, you know, your son-in-law was a dope dealer. But he did change his life. But that does not mean that we need to have full-on fucking documentaries, money being spent, conversations being had about stereotypes when people are literally living up to those stereotypes nick cannon is planting his seed all over the place nick cannon is out here planting his seed all over the place the baby is reckless as fuck trey songs chris brown columbus short these are just the people we talked about today these are just the people we talked about today all living up to some type of stereotype about black men so why the fuck are we doing documentaries about how they don't live up to these stereotypes when they in fact do they in fact do and, and listen i don't begrudge them that because i live up to some stereotypes sometimes and guess what i don't give a fuck you know why you know why because i take care of myself I take care of myself and I'm always trying to be a better person mentally, spiritually, knowledgeably, intellectually, always trying to be a better person. You can never, the, the day that I stop learning, the day that I stop consuming information is the day I die. The Louisiana river cricket. He's another one. So the fact that I, Kanye, Kanye, come on. Y'all better come through. All of these men, problematic, stereotypical, and we sitting up here having conversations about how they don't live up to these stereotypes all the time. Come on, Miss Tina. You got two beautiful, exceptional daughters. Why are we not having a conversation about girls or women? Or at least if we are having a conversation about black people, why is it always just about black men and never about black people? As if women, black women don't have stereotypes that they get pigeonholed with. Let's not even talk about 
being expressive, being honest, being blunt, and how that's perceived when you're a black woman. You're a bitch. You're problematic no matter what. Can be the sweetest person in the fucking world. But because you don't emote the same way that the, the soft anti of us is supposed to be, which is such, such ridiculousness when you really think about it, the idea to expect black women to be as docile and, 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 and you know, fucking laying down like white women do. How? We don't have the same DNA, nigga. We don't have the same experience. We don't have the same makeup. We don't have the same niggas. And when we do, y'all do the same thing to them that y'all do to us. Use them, abuse them, leave them to raise kids by themselves. And listen, I want to say this. I'm talking about stereotypes and how people in the media live up to those stereotypes because understand that is not my experience. That's not my experience. But I can't tell you about the family members that had kids all over the fucking place. Family members that didn't know where the fuck their children was on any given day. Y'all out here living up the stereotypes and don't give a fuck. So don't don't sit up here and do documentaries about it. Like, like it just seems it, it seems stupid. It seemed it, it seemed ill informed, ill informed, and from a very biased standpoint of feeling the need to coddle and protect and constantly stroke the ego of black men in a very weird way. We should be having conversations that are reflective of the times we are living in. And one of the issues that we are having is not white people stereotyping black people. That, that's not an issue we're having right now. It is, but that's not the biggest issue we're having right now. Yes, police brutality, but I feel like I'm tired of y'all ignoring the fact that they kill black women too. The fuck? They don't just kill black men. And y'all really have all of these conversations excluding black women as if we don't have to not only deal with this bullshit from white people, but we also, unlike many other ethnicity groups of women, have to deal with this bullshit from our own men. I just finished listening to, to, the, to, to the, uh, the young lady who was on uh, Lionel B show. Lionel B interviewed the girl who got into that fight with uh the soda Maya boy on fresh and fits ignorant ass podcast inflammatory gas lighting ignorant ass anti-black podcast let me tell you something fresh and fit you know why you don't want black women because black women don't want you that's why you want me to be honest the indian looking nigga looks like he don't wipe his ass all the way look like there might be chunks of shit in his underwear Nobody wants you. Look like your breath always stank. It don't matter how many push-ups you do, nigga. You very much have a type of the type of a type of the type of motherfucker that shit in their drawers and turn around and look at you like something wrong with you. And the other one, the B one, because you know he's the A one. The other one is the B one. Can we be honest and stay and say that your ass is ugly? I let me tell you something. I don't like to speak on people's looks, and it ain't got nothing to do with him being black. And we know that we know it ain't got nothing to do with him being black because they got so many other black men that his exact same pigment or darker and are beautiful. That nigga is ugly. I don't know what's wrong with his face. I don't know. He is facially challenged out. This motherfucker got the nerve to be up there on on the website, on the podcast. I don't like the darkies. Nigga, what? How about you start with the man in the mirror? What are you talking about? You don't like black women because you don't like yourself. And look at you, nigga. I wouldn't like you either. I don't like you. I don't know you. But I seen enough. This is what y'all are out here doing. Fighting women. Smelling like shit. And you want to talk about how they don't live up to these stereotypes? Yeah, not all of them. Mine don't, at least not these, <laughs> not these problematic ones. Yeah, stereotypes I can get past, you know. <laughs> He's a country nigga, you know, run on rocks with no shoes on. Eat weird parts of the chicken.
Everybody does not eat gizzards. I have never eaten a gizzard. Something is wrong with you, country motherfucker. Okay, I'm tired of it, y'all. We just finished talking about all these crazy ass black men, and y'all really be out here acting like we supposed to be out here protect the no nigga protect the black woman you a whole ass man i shouldn't have to protect you the fuck i look like do i look like a nigga to you i shouldn't have to protect you strong ass man what are you talking about Ugh. i'm not on one i've been holding that in for a minute that nigga is ugly like it always be the ones that you don't want fuck that got the audacity to be on somebody platform talking about how black women ain't shit sir what what <laughs> us we're the problem <laughs> us we're the problem niggas look like they be fucking but i'm gonna let it go miss tina i know you may have went you have you meant well and you were older lady but somebody should have told her we can have better conversations or let's have this conversation in a way that promotes something that actually needs the conversation. Protecting black women who are being kidnapped and trafficked and abused and killed on Facebook. Violence against women. You know what's crazy is that you got dogged out by your fucking husband. And you want to do a documentary on how great these niggas are. I cannot. I cannot. I love you, Miss Tina, but this is an old, this was this was an old bitch move. <laughs> this was an old bitch move. Okay. We love you though. Listen, we love you. We do. But I feel like there are better conversations and there are better ways to have these conversations that don't constantly make them so male-centered that don't constantly ignore the black female perspective of all of this bullshit that we are forced to go through living in this ghetto ass place called earth. It's ghetto and I want to leave. Oh my God. We love you though, Miss Nose. Just know that, okay? It's no disrespect, ma'am, but I'm too real not to be honest about this. I've been watching videos and intaking information all day about this. And I really do feel like I'm tired of the male-centered, black male worship. You know, the girls is talking about it. And I'm not anti-black man, obviously. <laughs> okay, check my Pink Fix channel on my Discord. I am not anti-black man. I'm not, but I'm also a realist and I'm anti-bullshit. I'm anti-bullshit. And constantly ignoring black women and our perspective and what we go through and how we're treated is a problem. It's a problem, y'all. When, listen, Tonya TKO was talking about fucking Frederick Douglass pimping. Did he pimp his wife? No, he didn't pimp her out. No, Frederick Douglass' uh, wife got him out of uh, slavery. Worked to get him out of slavery. And then he proceeded to dog her out and I believe eventually leave her for somebody else or some shit like that after he had all them kids with her. So it's just like... I feel like there has never been a moment in history where black women have been protected, safe, exalted, upheld in the same way that people do it for white women. I don't know a, a time and space where we have been given that that energy. Left it for a white woman. That's what they say. That's what they say. They say he treated his wife terribly. He left his his wife for a Filipino woman, child, white woman don't speak any damn English. You know what they say. But it's just sad to me. It's sad to me. And as a, as a beautiful, intuitive, talented black woman myself, I'm tired of these conversations not including us 
because there has never been a time when we have not had to be the background to you niggas foreground and you've done nothing. For real, you've done nothing. In re you know, in retrospect of things. You have not like helped protect us in this society the way other men have helped protect their women in society. I'm not talking about in homes because this nigga makes me feel safe. My daddy made me feel safe. I was protected as a young black girl by black men. It's not my experience. I want to be clear. But I also saw how some of my family members didn't protect their kids. So even though it wasn't specifically me, it was close enough around me for me to understand that the shit is real. And yes, Hannah, we are fucking tired. And the last thing we need is for matriarchs Faye, T, please. The last thing we need is for our matriarchs to continue to do us a disservice by not including our perspective in these conversations. I'm tired of it. I mean, shit, Monique was saying the same thing about how often black women have been treated so badly in this fucking industry and it's not until they die that y'all finally want to care. Y'all finally want to say something. Only when he's here. Only when he's here do I get to request things. <laughs> In higher places not having these convo. That's what I'm saying. Like, y'all should be having this, this conversation better than this. And y'all are not. And it's disappointing. And it just makes me wonder, Beyonce, did you talk to your mama? What's going on? Solange, did anybody talk to Tina? Y'all just be out here like, all right, mom. Because I feel like Solange has to have a, a better perspective on this. <laughs> talk to your mama, girl. All right, y'all. It's 1030 and I have an early flight in the morning, so I got to go. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all so much. Look, reading so much. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Um, you know, and uh, make sure you sign up for the Bondi Blue uh, show website, bondibluesshow.com. Sign up for the website, y'all. I appreciate y'all. I'll see y'all later.